BG3 is already topping new records set previously. We also gotta take a look at some future updates and patches that are being worked on, and some developer tweets that coincide with that as well, and even a cool mod that's being worked on, and some other neat tips and tricks for your playthrough. We got a lot to talk about. What's up, World Shipper? Back in the video, we're checking out all things BG3. Okay, so first up, let's just jump into some of those record-breaking stats that we got from this game. And essentially, this game got a higher peak count from its current player count on the second weekend of its launch. So it topped its previous peak that we talked about last time. And it ended up just being 4,000 players shy of beating Hogwarts Legacy for the number eight spot. But to see an increase over the second weekend to 875,000 players, that is absolutely nuts to see. And it's only happened with a few releases before. I think one of those examples is Elden Ring, which is another incredible game that deserved all the hype around it. Hogwarts Legacy, that sold mostly on its name as the game got pretty dull after the first few hours. It was a really cool game and a really cool experience for the Hogwarts Legacy Castle, but it's definitely nowhere near Elden Ring or Baldur's Gate 3 in terms of quality. So I do wish they would have got the number eight spot as Hogwarts Legacy definitely doesn't deserve to be up there, but it is what it is and it came really, really close. We'll have to see if next weekend the numbers even pump even more. Although I doubt so as much as a lot of people are seemingly finishing the game now. But we do have to talk about the future of the patches as well as some upcoming features that we might be seeing. So in the last community update, we actually did get a dev note here, which said, as we continue to look forward to releasing hotfixes and working towards our first serious patch, we also decided to look backward this week, we've cooked up some statistics. And that was that whole thing that we outlined the other day where they showed off all the stats and everything from that. If you want to check those out again, I'll have a link down below for those. However, if you haven't beaten Act 1 yet, I wouldn't see it because there is a little bit of spoiler stuff there. But yeah, overall, those stats are pretty staggering. But as for this first serious patch, we might have a few features or a feature that might be coming to BG3 sometime sooner than later. And a lot of people have been asking for a barber shop or a way to change their player appearance. I do wish the game had a barber shop system at least so you could change your hair color and things like that. There is some stuff there with that and yeah, we definitely should be able to change our hair color. As far as a full appearance change, I do think it takes away a little bit from your player experience only because the person that you have set should be who you are unless you're using some sort of disguise kit or the disguise ability. However, just fully out changing your entire appearance in an RPG just seems a little bit different to me. But I do totally understand people wanting it, so the freedom of choice should probably be there. Again, there should be at least a barber shop. However, we did have a tweet here from the trusted Titan, who was replying to a Crom Welp tweet here, and they said, Sir, please let me change how I look in the game. I'm begging. Crom Welp responded here saying, Things are being cooked. So it's cool to see that they're already looking at features that fans are requesting. I mean, the game is very, very, very much so feature complete in of itself, but it is nice to see that they're already looking at things and features, even though the game's already feature complete. They're wanting to actually add more to it. Unlike other game devs who can only add one stash tab because of the way they program the entire game. I'm looking at you Diablo 4. But regardless, it is really cool to see that they're actually looking at other features for the game already. And maybe this comes in that big serious patch that they're working on, or at least some type of other big feature that they wanted to add and couldn't make in time for launch. However, they did move the launch date earlier a month, although I do think this was in combatants with Starfield and other games that are launching at the end of the month like Armor Core 6. However, I do think that the beginning of August was probably the perfect time that they could have picked to launch this game, as it was right before some of these other big releases and people have plenty of time to actually beat this game because they're definitely going to need it. There's a lot there with this game if you ask for it. And that's what I love about BG3 is that if you play the game and you ask for it, the game will give you even more. If you go around and explore, the game has a ton to offer to you. And most games, 99% of games, don't do that, especially the ones in current gen. So it definitely is nice to see this for a change. Now, BG3 also did break another record by getting the number one spot on Metacritic. And it also has the number one spot on OpenCritic as well. Now, the review count is still quite low but it has a 97 making it the top rated pc game of all time again the funny part is the number one spot and technically now the number two spot was a game called disco elysium now i never played this game but the funny part about it is that larian studios actually helped work on this game so they are known for two of the top rated pc games of all time and it definitely shows you definitely could see why that they are the top rated and why this company is so prized they truly do make video games for video game players whereas a lot of 
these other companies make products and they don't really care about if there's a video game underneath. And you could definitely tell that in the recent years. It's just good to know that we still have a studio or two out there that will actually make a video game. And we do have some cool tips that will help during your playthrough, but we have one here that I actually didn't know of. If you throw a water bottle on a player character or any of the origin or party member characters, they will actually clean themselves or be cleaned of all of those grit that they have on them, which yeah, they definitely look pretty dirty during cutscenes. If you want to clean them up for the cutscene or you want to just clean them up in general, give them a little bit of a shower, you could just toss a water bottle their way or even use Shadow Heart's water ability. It's definitely super cool there. I love when environment stuff and things like that interact with the game. Also, if you do have a downed player and you have an ability like a heal ability, you can res them just from range. Just cast the heal on them, then they'll revive. You can also apparently do this with potions as well. However, you do have to be cautious as I do believe that potions do cause damage occasionally or can. I'm not too sure if it will do more damage than intended to your companion, leading to them probably not making it. However, it is something there that's kind of cool with the game mechanic, and if you do really need it in a pinch, you can definitely use that. Now, I haven't looked much into the modding scene, but I definitely do want to make a mod video in the future in a compilation of the top 10 mods. However, I want to do this after I beat the game to kind of keep the purity of it, and I do think that people right now especially are going to want to play the game in its most purest form, but eventually when I do beat this game in the coming days, maybe in a week or so, I am going to cover a top 10 or like top 5 or whatever it is mod list. I'm going to be going through a ton of them and all throughout Nexus mods to see what some of the best ones are. However, we did have one here posted that looks really, really cool and promising. There's actually a third person view mod or at least a camera mod that someone used into a third person mod with a controller. So their movements essentially here are with a controller and not just with the camera movement, but they're actually able to use a controller while moving their character and keeping it in third person. It looks super cool here and it's definitely one that I might use eventually. I don't really want to use a controller, so I do hope they get this up and running with WASD. And it does look super natural just because of how good the environment is and how good the player character models are. But yeah, that's definitely going to be a mod that I'll check out in the coming weeks, if not in a few days. On an ending note here, yesterday's video did absolutely insane. I still can't believe how many viewers it has right now, and it's still gaining viewers. That is not typical for most of my news videos or videos that I do for the daily. Maybe for my build videos and occasional how-to videos. However, that's absolutely insane to me, and the reception has been insane. It also has one of my highest like-to-dislike ratios for a video of that stature. That's just incredible to me. I'm so glad the reception is really good there. And thank you to the people that have provided me with the feedback along the way. I really do appreciate all of it. And I can't thank you guys enough for actually checking out my content. And if you are here from yesterday's video, thank you for checking out a small creator and giving that video and my channel a chance. But that should about cover for today's video. If you like, like, and subscribe. And until the next one, deuces.